Okay, guys, in number three, uh, we've got this uh, stick with wheels on it here. Um, it's got a certain mass, 50 kilograms, um, and it's getting pulled this way. It's getting pulled off there to the left. Um, so let's make sure we got that. That's one force to take care of. The other force we've got involved is the, uh, the weight the weight of the object itself mg okay just like that okay now let's talk about where to rotate this thing so if we pivot we could pivot around b okay um which which should probably be okay uh we could pivot around the center if we pivot around the center then we have to take into account the fact that this thing is moving uh, it's, it's moving and rotating at the same time, or rather, it's moving and rotating at the same time like this. Um, but if we pivot at A, then it's going to do a really nice job of taking into account the motion of the center of mass as well as the rotation. And we saw this trick in the last problem that we did. So A is the way to go here. Um, let's write down some of the information that they give us. So we know that the mass is equal to 50. Then we're going to look at the moment of inertia around A. And um, so it's a rod. So we've got the one third ml squared term. And if you plug in all of those numbers, you get, uh, of course, it's a 50 kilogram slender rod. So that's 110 pounds or so. You get a pretty large moment of inertia. 416.7. Okay. To get us started there. Now, let's take a look at our equation with our kinetic energy and our work. We've already talked about how we are going to deal with this as rotation instead of rotation plus translation. So let's get of the rid of this translation part here. And we are starting from rest. So that term's going to go away. So now let's think about what's happening with the work. Okay. So both the weight and the force P are creating a moment. Absolutely. But if you take a look at each of those things, the moment, like, let's just say, let's take a look at the weight, for example. Okay. With the, uh, with the weight, then you're going to have to contend with this angle. And so then you're going to have a function of theta. You've got to work out all your angles as it moves from some place to another place. And then you've got the same thing you're going to have to go through with this angle down here for P. Okay, so it's possible that both the moment from the weight and the moment from P uh, could turn out to be kind of gnarly um, expressions for moment. But like we saw in the last one, the problem where the, uh, the rod popped up like this, what we could do since it's just work is we can say that P is going to be acting along this distance right here. Okay, and then the weight is going to be moving from this location, the center of mass, up to that location. So here I've got a delta x, and here I've got a delta y. So I can look at, I, I can think about it as a translational work um, going into my object. All right, so let's see how that pans out for us. So we're going to be getting rid of that term right there. So let's write all this down. We got one half I uh, at A omega final squared. Okay. Now let's start with the weight. The weight is downwards. Okay. So I'm going to have a minus mg delta y. And then my P is to the left. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and have a minus P delta x. Okay. 
Now, uh, we might be uh, sort of concerned about that because it looks like everything on the work side of our equation is negative. All right. So let's think about delta y and px. So our delta a or our delta y, we're going from a height of two to a height of two and a half, which means that our delta y is a plus 0.5. Wow, that got sloppy quick. Not sure how that happened. Equals plus 0.5. Okay, so we've got a negative. It's downward. It's moving upward. So overall, that's a negative amount of work which is cool because uh, it's the thing is going uphill. We expect the things going uphill to slow down. So that takes away from our kinetic energy. So that works out. But let's see what's happening with P because I've got a minus P on there as well. Well, P, you can see um, this distance of this triangle is, is three and uh, it's to the left. So delta X is actually minus three. Uh, so then it works out. You see, I've got a negative P times X, but that's a, a negative three right there as well. Okay. So if let's put some of those numbers in here. Let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to have minus. My mass is 50. 9.81. Positive 0.5. Yep, you don't have to do the the positive right in the positive number that I like I did I just wanted you to be able to um, see it uh, minus P which is 300 and minus 3 is our Delta X in there like that okay and whenever you run those numbers what you're gonna get is 1555 okay and make sure you do those for yourself okay Get that extra practice in there. You want to be competent. You want to be able to do it quick, quick and, and accurate. So my final omega, all right, I'm going to have the same expression, 2 onto the work divided by I. And when you run all those numbers, you're going to get 2.732. radians per second, okay? Piece of cake.